100% desperate. That comment was made after Canadian peacekeepers made a heartbreaking discovery in a central Bosnian town. More than 200 children were found in a mental hospital left on their own after staff ran away. The children are now being cared for by the group Doctors Without Borders. We get more on the situation from Dean Reynolds. And a warning, the pictures are disturbing. The UN says this is the result of war. But even by the measurements of the conflict in Bosnia, what happened at an institute west of Sarajevo set a horrifying new standard for tragedy. 250 retarded children and teenagers were abandoned here for four straight days without food, water, or care. There's about 100 infants uh, under 18 months old, about 100, and the rest uh, range up to about 19 months. One child, two years old, died of dehydration in his crib. All were suffering from malnutrition. One was eating crumbs of bread off the floor. Their doctors and nurses were ordered out last Friday by Bosnian Croat militiamen under attack by Muslim forces. The patients were found living amid their own filth, uncomprehending. Some had been locked into their rooms. UN and relief agency personnel are now attempting to clean the place and feed the victims. It's a tragedy of war that you know, we should expect, but to, to come across it in a to come across a facility that was at one time quite well staffed, quite quite well equipped, to come across a facility like this that's just been caught in a war is just very tragic. The patients here are from each of Bosnia's warring ethnic communities, Serbs, Croats, and Muslims. The UN said Foynice, the town where they had been treated, was once an example of coexistence, but no more. Dean Reynolds, ABC News, Sarajevo. And one more note, another child died of dehydration this morning. Monsoon floods in India have killed more than 450 people in the last three weeks. The flood waters have also destroyed crops worth tens of millions of dollars. This year's monsoon is said to be the worst in five years. Soldiers across the U.S. Have mixed, have mixed reactions to President Bill Clinton's new policy on gays in the military. The new policy will allow gays to serve in the armed forces if they agree not to engage in homosexual acts. Many feel that could put them in compromising positions. The military leaders, meanwhile, are lining up in support of Clinton's decision. Bob Zelnick reports. Having substantially defeated the president in the battle over homosexuals in uniform, members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff lined up to endorse the policy. We have come up with a solution that we can all live with that protects the force, that protects the privacy rights of all of those serving in the force. Troops in the field who mostly oppose openly gay soldiers also seemed encouraged. As long as they keep it under wraps, everything should be all right. A memorandum circulated by Secretary Aspen explaining the president's policy cautions military commanders against questioning recruits or soldiers about their sexual orientation. Homosexual acts, including kissing or holding hands with members of the same sex, are grounds for discharge. A soldier who states he's gay would then have the burden of proving his statement was false in order to avoid discharge. There are no restrictions on investigators plea bargaining with homosexual soldiers in order to learn the identities of other military gays. And while marching in a gay rights parade, going to a gay or lesbian bar, or subscribing to homosexual literature would not by themselves trigger an investigation. They could be evidence of homosexuality if there were other grounds to investigate. Well, the new policy means homosexuals would not have to tell a lie to get into military service. It also means they would have to live a lie to stay there. Bob Zelnick, ABC News at the Pentagon. Toronto police say a young man is recovering in hospital after a vicious attack by some 20 youth. The victim was hit with baseball bats, iron bars, and a machete. Police believe the attack was sparked by an incident at a mall last week when the youth accidentally bumped into one of the attackers. One of the most powerful members of the U.S. Congress is under investigation today. Dan Rostenkowski's name has come up in court documents filed in an embezzlement scandal. Jackie Judd has the details. The post office in the House of Representatives for two decades was run by Robert Rota. Yesterday, he pleaded guilty to being involved in the embezzlement of funds on behalf of at least two congressmen. He allowed the House post office to be used as a convenient and, until this investigation, largely untraceable source of illegal cash for selected 
members of Congress. The two lawmakers were referred to only as Congressman A and Congressman B. However, post office vouchers mentioned in these court documents match those submitted by the office of Congressman Dan Rostenkowski, the influential chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. For example, Congressman A submitted a $900 voucher for postage stamps on July 10, 1985. House records indicate Rostenkowski's office sent in an identical bill. Congressman B appears to be former member Joseph Coulter of Pennsylvania, whose office also appeared to submit identical bills. Both he and Rostenkowski were subpoenaed last year by a federal grand jury, but neither has been indicted. The post office probe began under Jay Stevens, the U.S. attorney during the Bush administration, who said, quote, Rostenkowski should soon be hearing the footsteps of law. I would expect that uh, within 30 to 60 days, this investigation should be concluded as to the members of Congress who uh, allegedly participated in this illegal scheme. The investigation of the House Post Office has been hanging over Rostenkowski's head for more than a year. These recent developments come at an especially bad time for him, just as he becomes deeply involved in delicate budget negotiations. Jackie Judd, ABC News, Capitol Hill. A 34-year-old gorilla has become a first-time father at the Bronx Zoo. Animal activists were outraged because Timmy the gorilla had been sent from New York to the, from the Cleveland Zoo two years ago, in effect separating him from his mate who was sterile. The step was taken in hopes of diversifying the gene pool of the captive gorilla population. Bronx Zoo officials say the baby is a healthy 5-pound, 6-ounce male. And the expos are going to um, keep trying until they get it right as well. Follow the gorilla out here. <laughs> this afternoon, the experts are going to send Dennis Martinez out there against Bill Swift in an effort to stem the West Coast bleeding. Since the All-Star break, they've won one of five games in the West. The good news is they've lost only a game in the standings. Yesterday, Chris Nabholz was the losing pitcher in the opening game of the Giants series. Only thing worse than the Giants yesterday were the Expos, and the Expos lost the game 6-2. to two. Jim Eisenreich drove home Darren Dalton with the winning run as the Phillies beat Los Angeles 7-5. to five. They moved nine and a half up on the Expos. And Mark Witten, the story for the Cardinals. First, he turned a fouled-up foul ball that blew into fair territory into a force-out at second base on Otis Nixon. And then he put his throwing arm on display as the Braves' Ron Gant tries to score from second. A perfect strike to the plate. Gant is out. And Witten hit a solo home run his fourth in five games. Cardinals shut out the Braves 4-0. They're still three behind the Phillies. Comeback of the night at age 47, Nolan Ryan brought his express back after 72 days on the disabled list. Pitching in his 27th season, he looked like a 27-year-old. He left the game with two outs in the sixth inning to a standing ovation, six strikeouts, and three hit baseball. And the Rangers won 5-3. to three. 91 pitches, 57 of them for strikes, and right up there in the 90s all night long. That 91st and final pitch clocked at 94 miles an hour. Tonight was a special night for me because uh, uh, three weeks ago I didn't know if I would pitch again this year. I didn't know uh, if I did uh, when I would pitch. So uh, uh, tonight was a big night. All right, fans, no rain on this parade, no playing it by ear like Scott Sanderson, no misplacement of equipment, no two left feet, and definitely no fooling. It's time for the plays of the day. You like Mark Witten's throw to the plate? Cubs center fielder Sammy Sosa knows what his arm can do, too. He cuts in front, throws the strike to third, and gets the Reds' Hal Morris tagging up. Gary Sheffield learning a new ballpark in Miami has foul territory down pat. Todd Zeal at the hot corner for the hot Cardinals. Chico leaned to the Royals on his knees for Harold Reynolds' drive in the hole at Baltimore. Cecil Fielder of the Tigers thought he had a base knock. Pat Mears of the Twins gets not one. He turns it into two. And Tim Raines hits it past John Olroot at first. Base hit. No way, Roberto Alomar is there, and so is Dave Stewart covering. Reigns is out, and give them all an A-plus for teamwork. And this is Pete Harnish, a pitcher, striking out, and then scaring the heck out of the umpire with his fit of temper. And this is John Franco, after blowing a Mets lead in the ninth inning to the San Diego Padres. 
If the cooler wasn't dead already, it is now. So what happens? Charlie O'Brien hits a solo home run in the top of the 10th, and Franco gets a win instead of a save. And the mighty Mets have won three in a row for the first time this year. Those mighty Mets. That's it. Thanks, Ron. We'll be right back. CFCF 12 introduces a show that exposes the naked... Completely naked? Completely naked. <laughs> ...about issues like love. I told her the truth. It's unheard of. She asked me to. So you lie. Religion. <laughs> Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! I'd like a Hare Krishna fist on your throat, you little punk. Life in a different life. Seinfeld, Wednesdays at 7.30 on CFCF 12. You need a job. You Tuesday, July the 20th. I'm Mitsumi Takahashi. Have a good afternoon.